Hello my friends, it's Miss Brent here and today I'd like to tell you a story and then we're going to take this story and see if we can write a story of our own. The story today is called Fee Fi Fo Bum and there's some clues in the picture. I can see the big bad wolf and I can also see a beanstalk so that's not the story I was quite expecting. I didn't think the big bad wolf was in the story of Jack and the Beanstalk. So let's find out what it's all about. Here we go. So the big bad wolf, he's been in lots of stories, but I don't think he's been in the story about Jack and the Beanstalk. I know there's the story of the big bad wolf and the three little pigs. I know there's the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Hmm. So this is Fee Fi Fo Fum. Wolfie's plan to eat the girl in the red cloak had gone well to start with. He'd hidden Granny in the cupboard and put on her night clothes before the girl walked through the door. If only he hadn't shown the girl his teeth. She had screamed so loudly, Ah! Well, wouldn't you if you saw the big bad wolf? That Will the woodsman had heard her and come running to her rescue. In a panic, Wolfie dived out of the nearest window and landed with a yelp in an enormous patch of stinging nettles. Could this day get any worse? Ow! <laughs> Luckily, he managed to outrun the angry woodsman, who was weighed down by his heavy axe. Not taking any chances, Wolfie kept running, forgetting that he was still wearing his granny disguise. Just as he thought he was safe, the nighty slipped down around his ankles, making him trip and fall ah! <laughs> into a thorny bush. Oh, once his head had stopped spinning, he saw that he had landed outside a little cottage. Inside, he could hear an angry woman shouting, Oh, Jack, what on earth are we meant to do with these silly beans? Before Wilfie could move, the beans came sailing out of the open window and rained down on his head. Ow, he said. I've had enough of this. It was starting to get dark. Wolfie was exhausted, so he death settled down to sleep. As he lay dreaming, a beanstalk began to grow from one of the beans. It stretched higher and higher into the sky, and by the time Wolfie woke up, it was disappearing into the clouds. He heard the sound of rustling leaves from above and caught a whiff of smelly socks. Mmm, a boy, he exclaimed hungrily. No more red cloaked girls or little pigs for me, he said to himself. I'm heading after that boy. Soon it will be lunchtime. Wolfie climbed as quickly as he could, using his claws to grip the stalk as he clambered higher and higher. When he finally reached the top, he gasped in amazement <gasps> as he stared up at a gigantic castle. It was so huge, that it looked like it belonged to a giant. In the door was an enormous cat flap through which he just saw a boy's legs disappearing. Wolfie struggled as he waded through the soft fluffy clouds, but eventually he reached the flap and clambered inside. He tried to follow the scent of the boy, but was distracted by another smell that crept inside his hairy nostrils. Hmm. Oh, someone who smelt even worse than the boy was nearby. Wolfie crept quietly through the empty halls until he reached the kitchen. 
There, on top of a huge table, stood the boy, with a goose under one arm and a harp under the other. Without making a sound, Wolfie tiptoed towards him. But the silence was suddenly shattered as the harp played a noisy tune. Oh, oh said the boy as the ground began to rumble. A terrifying voice boomed. Be fi fo fum Be fi fo fum muttered Wolfie to himself. I think it's best if I head off. But at that moment, the boy jumped down from the table and landed on Wolfie, Oof! pinning him to the floor. Sorry, said the boy, grinning as he ran towards the door. And thank you for the soft landing. Wolfie struggled to his feet and raced after the boy with the thud, thud of the giant's footsteps close behind him. The boy hurried through the cat flap and raced ahead, but poor Wolfie was too slow. The giant yanked open the door and sent him flying through the air with a colossal kick. Wolfie landed doof, in a painful heap next to the beanstalk. Determined to catch the boy, the persistent wolf scrambled down the beanstalk with the giant in hot pursuit. In his haste, Wolfie slipped and tumbled, overtaking the boy and bouncing from branch to branch before meeting the ground with a bone shuddering thump. <clears throat> now, you might think this is where Wolfie's problems would end, but unfortunately for him, there was one last horrible surprise waiting. There in the garden stood Will the woodsman with his sharp axe. Not you again, Will yelled. He chased after Wolfie, accidentally hacking at the beanstalk with every swing of his axe. Soon a creaking sound filled the air and the beanstalk began to topple. The giant and the beanstalk came crashing to the ground. <clears throat> As the boy headed back to his cottage, Wolf stalked away, furious after a disastrous day of bumps and bruises, and no dinner. Maybe I'll go and visit those little pigs again, he thought third time lucky after all. Some wolves never learn. So, a different story with the big bad wolf and I liked the way that um, the author of that story took the big bad wolf, a character that we know really well, and combined him with another fairy tale character, Jack and the Beanstalk and the Giant and made a whole new story and it's interesting how it always seems to me that at the end of it the wolf even though he is big and bad he never seems to win now we're going to write a new tale for the big bad wolf today and you can think about do you want it to be another one of those stories where it all ends badly for the big bad wolf at the end or do you think that actually maybe it could have a happy ending for the wolf. Could the big bad wolf stop being big and bad and just be the wolf? I don't know, there's so much to think about. Now, when I was thinking about planning a new adventure, a new story, I was thinking about characters I could use. I thought about the three little pigs because at the end of that story, the wolf says that he might go and try and find the three little pigs because he's still hungry and he wants wants some food. Um, so in your story do you think you might go and visit the three little pigs or maybe it involves some other characters. I had an idea, I was thinking through different ideas that I could do and one idea I thought of was Jack and Jill. Um, so I and the ugly duckling. So I was thinking that maybe the big bad wolf might want to eat the ugly duckling. 
Jack and Jill are going up the hill to fetch the water. Jack fell down, bucket goes flying, bops the wolf on the head, and the ugly duckling gets away. So that was one thought I had. And then I thought again, and then I thought about Cinderella and the fairy godmother. And I liked the fairy, the idea of the fairy godmother, um, maybe being able to do a bit of magic on the wolf. So I decided to write a story um, with the big bad wolf and Cinderella and the fairy godmother. So once I'd thought through a few ideas, what I did next was I came up with a plan, which I've done on a story mountain. Now, when you come to do your story, if you want to plan yours, um, there is a blank story mountain that you could use if you can print it and if you can't that's okay you could just do boxes on a piece of paper it doesn't have to be anything fancy it's just a way of putting down your ideas now my story mountain has five boxes the beginning how the story starts the build-up what happens next the dilemma now this is an important part of the story this is a dilemma is another way of saying a problem so a good story really needs to have some sort of a problem in it. Resolution, how that problem is solved or resolved. Um, and then the ending, how does it end? So on my story map, you'll see there's a little bit of writing and there's pictures. It doesn't need to have enough that much on it, just enough for you to know what it is that you want to do. So I'm imagining that one bright sunny morning can you see how i put sentence starters on for each box one bright sunny morning um the wolf the wolf's belly was rumbling so he decided that he'd have to go and find some food he walked and he walked and he walked until he came to a castle he went up to the castle and the wolf peered through the window and inside he saw cinderella and thought mm, she looks good enough to eat now the wolf's problem is getting into the castle the window won't open. He thinks about going up on the chimney but going down chimneys has never ended very well for the wolf so he goes off that idea and then luckily he manages to find a door that's open so he goes inside. Cinderella doesn't see him, he's just about to jump on her to gobble her up when the fairy godmother appears and she's a bit cross um, and she casts a magic spell on the wolf and turns him into a slimy green frock Wahaha. and it's going to be another sad ending for the wolf in my story because the wolf hops away and i want to kind of leave it open as to what might happen to the wolf next is he going to be a frog forevermore or might something else happen so i think the big bad wolf is this amazing character who could just go on and on and on in lots of different stories you can have so much fun with him so that's my plan that's my idea and as i'm doing it i'm talking you through my ideas and the more you talk about it and this is great if you've got somebody at home that you can talk to um, by talking about it it helps you to get your ideas straight in your head so that you're then ready to do your writing so i put my plan to one side and i got my paper I started to write. Now this is my first draft so it might be that I come back to it tomorrow and I have a look at it and think oh, actually do you know I could make it better but I'm going to share with you um, how I've turned my story map into my story. See what you think. The day dawned bright and sunny. The big bad wolf was hungry as always and as his belly rumbled he thought about where to find food. He looked in the fridge but it was bare, apart from a rather mouldy looking cabbage and a piece of green cheese. He was not impressed. He only had a few pence, so he couldn't go to the shops. He was going to have to find his breakfast elsewhere. He set off down the windy path through the deep dark woods. He walked and he walked and he walked until he came to a magnificent castle. Hmm, where there is a castle, there is always food he thought to himself. He had to take care though, as castles always have knights guarding them and he did not want to get caught. He tiptoed through the grounds until he spied a window. Very quietly, 
He looked through the window and do you know what he saw? Sitting on a chair by a roaring fire sat Cinderella. Oh, she looks good enough to eat, chuckled the wolf. He tried the window, but it was locked. Sensibly, he decided a trip down the chimney wasn't a good idea as he was sure to burn his bottom. He had had a bad experience with a chimney once before and he did not want to go there again. Then he spotted a door. He tried the handle and it opened. What luck, he thought to himself. He tiptoed inside and found himself in Cinderella's room. She had her back to him. He decided he could sneak up on her and catch her before she would know what was happening. He was just about to pounce on Cinderella when suddenly he heard a voice. Stop right there, you naughty wolf! He turned round, he turned around and came face to face with the fairy godmother. She waved her magic wand in the air and uttered some magic words. I won't tell you what, or you might try it on someone at home and that wouldn't be good. There was a flash. Psh! And then the wolf felt strange. Something wasn't right. He looked ahead and straight into a large mirror. The fairy godmother had only gone and turned him into a slimy green frog. Oh no! The wolf or frog groaned. Get out! shouted the fairy godmother, throwing him out of the open door. The frog sadly hopped away. Whatever shall I do now? he thought. So, next time you see a frog, just remember that it may not be a frog at all, but the big bad wolf. Beware. Okay, so there you have my first go at my story. Um, and I hope that by listening to the story today and what I've talked about, you might be ready to have a go at writing your own story. Now remember you've got your target cards with all those useful things on that you can include in your writing like conjunctions. I want to see some expanded noun phrases. Make sure you're using adjectives to describe. Um, can you put in some exclamations or some questions? Um, and just, do you know what my friends, have some fun with it. Write a fun story and then if you do, I would really, really love to read them. So you can email me to them and um, I can put them on the website. So that would be really fab. So my friends, have lots of fun with your writing. If you want at the end, you can also add some pictures. And if you'd like to send it with send it to me to read that would be wonderful okay take care my friends and i'll see you soon bye